Okay, friends, here we go. Some people get confused with the sequencer in the Moog One. And uh, I've been in some forums uh, and they were talking about it. I'm going to show you how I'm going to use it. And I think it's really nice. But you have to have in mind, it's not like a DAW sequencer. It's totally different. So what do have you got here? Uh, you press, uh, press compare and edit. And you have a sign tone. And th this is your synth one. Immediately uh, the keyboard control is on. And it's synth one. We've got three of those synths as you might know. So, uh, what you have to keep in mind all the time is these are separate synths and the sequencer, which is in the section here, it's not the arpeggiator, it's the sequencer, you can turn it on and or off and you have on display here record and all these things you need in a sequencer. They correlate with each of those synths or with all of them. So you can get a, a little bit confused by the time uh, um, to understand that uh, if the sequencer is on now here, it corresponds with synth number one. If you put on synth number two and the keyboard control is also in, it's also controlling the synth two. But what I'm going to do now to get into deeper understanding of it is, I only have synth one on and put on the sequencer and I have step mode on and um, go back to number one and I have 16 steps and I go into C minor something. So two, three, you see each step I put in here is in there. Then you can stop it, you can go back, the sequencer is on and you can play it back. So uh, you can speed it up quite fast or go down to something like that. Yes. Let's keep it in the middle somewhere. So this is our sequencer num number one uh, that is running Sinti number one. And uh, what is about the sequencer? Uh, how is it running? You can push up here in the right corner and you can see the sequence up running here. So there's a sequence running. And if sync is on, the whole sequencer is synced to the master clock. So I can use the master clock also in this case some people confuse it. There's a rate here and the ma there's a master clock. Uh, we come back later to the master clock if I use several synths. Then I can take the master clock and everything will be controlled by the master clock if sync is on here. Uh, and there's a clock division in here. Uh, it's also simple. If I have a clock division now it's 1 8 and this is 16. So here you see if I put speed it up here. It's also changing here the clock division. Yes. So this corresponds uh, in a way with what uh, what is going on here. It can be dotted, it can be whatever, it can, the lengths can be different. Uh, also that will be um, done later on. So what's the clue now? If I uh, want to have a second synth with a second line that's totally independent from the first one, uh, I switch off the sequencer of number one, I switch off the keyboard control of number one, go into synth two, switch on the keyboard control and switch on the sequencer there or just uh, press record again and do some bass notes here. Yes, uh, for that I go back to the start again. Number one, I have 16 steps. Also the steps length here is 16. Can be 64, up to 64. Maybe they change it in the future to 128 or even more. I think won't be a big deal to do that. Uh, but uh, now I've got this again and I have this rest and tie thing here. So I have two sequences that might be a little bit different. So I put in uh, a record again and put also C minor, a rest, a rest, and you see here, and tie. So here we are number one again. I get off and I switch on this sequence, and here this sequence runs. So now I have two sequences. This one with rests and ties, and the other one. So if I want to additionally hear synthy number one, on that one. I go back to synthy, num synthy number one, put it on here so that I can play something in if I want to, put on the sequencer of number one, and now sequencer number one is on and sequencer number two is also on. And if I run both from the start, it's like this. But I must start number one. And what you hear now is, I can stop number one, start it whenever I want to and dep 
depending on what and where I started. They are both in the clock division of that and the length is 16th and the, they had, uh, both have the same tempo. So this is uh, one thing uh, and if you want to stop them again uh, you have to go to the proper synth again and stop. Uh, so you have totally two ind independent sequences that makes it a little bit com complicated to control both. But you can match them. If you, uh, um, I may do that later on also, if you push the synth one and push then the second and the third uh, while you're holding synth one, uh, all are uh, synced by uh, one sequence here, you press start and you can uh, change the rate. But that's not what I want to do. I want to uh, really understand what's happening if I have two sequencers and start them at different times. And uh, in my dissertation many years ago, there were some uh, psychoacoustic and uh, perception uh, empirical studies on how do you perceive rhythms. So this takes the Moog 1 into a totally different uh, way from uh, pop music or just using it at a keyboard, as a keyboard or playing solo. You can do really scientific work uh, with that, uh, which I can't do with the door. And I'll show you also why not. Uh, so we have this two here running now. This is only one. Go to scenes two. So where is the one in this measurement here? Stop it. So uh, both are running on the same tempo, uh, but the clue is uh, you then can run on different tempos. Uh, I, I was really arguing on Facebook with some uh, people uh, when I was asking, do we have a digital sequencer uh, or Ableton or whatever, or Cubase or Pro Tools, we have MIDI and I can run different tempi on two tracks. And everybody said no. And then they were arguing, why? Why do we want to do this? And this is, my view is so stupid because uh, if it comes to composition, uh, uh, apart from pop music, it can be very interesting to have different tempi run uh, on two tracks, like you can com compose uh, with an ensemble and the violin is tem playing a tempo 120 and uh, uh, the cello is uh, playing uh, a division of it, or are totally off limits from 120 into 140 or something like that. Uh, so this is some intellectual work to do to understand uh, that music does not stop on, uh, stop on four on the floor. Uh, so can we do this here? Um, I start this one here. So for that I put off uh, the second uh, synth, and now I have this first synth here, and change the tempo. Then I switch this one off, the key control, go into the second one, and start the second sequencer. And now I can change the tempo of the second one. You hear the first one is keeping stable its tempo, and the second one is. I can p put uh, the sync off here, so it doesn't do this clock division thing. So you can play with the sync button here uh, to do something about that. So stop both. Um, so this is very, very nicely uh, uh, nice uh, and interesting to do this. And I could add now a third synth and uh, do something. And uh, if you have a theoretical concept like those guys in uh, Neue Musik, like Stockhausen or anybody has, or uh, like minimal music, uh, you can play with this. It, it depends a little bit on the sound you're using. It's, if it's more percussive, this might be more interesting. But the question is now, uh, do these synths react uh, separately after I played them in. Let's take the first one again. This is the first one. Uh, to any uh, um, sort of modulation I do or changing the sound and the second one keeps its sound. Of course, it's three different synths and that's where the fun starts. Uh, so I leave it like here and put in a, a, a second uh, oscillator. Do some hard synth. And uh, then I go into the synth effect and have a delay in here, yes? 
Okay, this was synth number one. I put it off, put off the sequencer off and go into the second one, put it on, sequencer on. And here it's separately and I do a bit different sound on that one. So, uh, you see that it's quite a little bit theoretical here, but now you understand what this uh, sequencer is all about. Putting some ladder filters, uh, doing a square wave, little bit pulse width and whatever, put in a little bit of noise. And the clue now is, I can take, as long as, as I don't take the master effects, I can use a different synth effect also on this second synth, totally independent from synth number one. Yes, uh, I'll just do it, then you can hear it. I go in, synth effect, effect type. Let's go into, mm, we had a delay. I, I take the flanger now, put it on, and put on a little bit of freeze. Okay, okay, here we got it, and now I switch this, this one off. You remember the flanging sound, and here's the first one again. And it's totally different from the first one. And if you want to hear, hear both, put them on both, yes. So now we got that the second one is too loud, and also that can be handled separately from the first one. I go into the second one again here, and go into the level of the VCA. can change the tempo here again. So the last thing to learn here is um, can I also do some modulations on it. There are step edit possibilities. I can go into each step I played in here and uh, make a different note. I even can overplay everything while it's running and change it. I can transpose the whole thing. But what about if I take, uh, let's uh, take this first synth here. Um, and here you have to think again. This one is on now. I go to that one that's uh, also on now and play. This is the first one. And I want to go into the Okay, I just want to uh, uh, record that. I go back to zero here, uh, start the whole thing, uh, uh, run it, uh, go into step mode, and... You see? As you see, it's not perfectly done. Maybe they have to uh, do an update on that. But uh, on most, uh, in most situations, it's really working quite nice. And step mode is the nicest, easiest one to do. The other thing, you, if you want to have a total control, you take the step edit. Uh, so, um, but what uh, if I have these two sequences running now here? <laughs> And I want to uh, control both at one time. Uh, you might at that point you understand that um, it's not that easy uh, if you always have, have to change between since two, since one, and put it on and off. Uh, so you can combine both. Uh, if you say uh, since one is uh, sequencer is on, uh, since two sequencer is also on. Uh, uh, both are controlled by the keyboard. You <laughs> see, you really have to fumble around a little bit to do that. And then you uh, hold this button and uh, take this one, and both. Both will keep their tempo. And now go to Master Clock. You hear? So in that case, both are controlled by the master clock. Another thing that was a little bit confusing for me, I'm not sure if it works now, if I choose since one and two both uh, combined, and then I go into this transpose thing, I found that it's only transposing one uh, um, since, but I'm not sure, Let's, let me listen. Maybe I have uh, a thinking mistake in here, I go into transpose. No, no, it's, it's working.
So when they're combined, it's working. But I also can say they're not combined. Uh, I turn it back then, and then I can only transpose one of these synths. So all in all, this is a very little introduction to the basics of this thinking of uh, the sequencer. Uh, uh, of course, there's quite a, a lot more if you go into the menu of the sequencer and uh, uh, go into uh, duplicating, clock timing, and whatever you want to change here, you can change it. Uh, and even go into the menu here, uh, like in, into the different bars and, and change each note. Um, but um, I think uh, it's much more interesting to do it live. Uh, there's only one question uh, left. What about a metronome in there? Uh, I did the step recording, but you also can take and make a real-time recording. And to that we come now, uh, and I'm going to um, sync it to an Akai MPC-1 here, so that in that step you understand that you can use it then for playing chords or playing freely, and where do I get a metronome <laughs> from? Uh, so let's have a look. I have to change a little bit here, and then we see that. So a different problem some people uh, are arguing about is uh, syncing this to something like an MPC. I have an MPC running here, the MPC is the master, it's MIDI out, not USB, into MIDI in. Here you go into the settings here, go into MIDI in out. Uh, you have to define that the MIDI in port is not USB, it's uh, supposed to be DIN. And uh, you can also go into the MIDI control here and uh, MIDI clock, receive MIDI clock should be Dean and uh, uh, the channels uh, should match and that's it. Then you choose a, ch a sound like this one here and then you're ready to go. Uh, you go in the sequencer back and the sequencer itself, uh, in this case it has a length of 32 uh, steps but don't forget to put on the sync. So when I start the MPC now and then I start the sequencer and while it's running I press the record button then you can do this. So here's the MPC coming in and then I start the button. Here you see it's running. One, two, three and press here. To get that can go in if I have a 16 voice uh, Moog one, uh, have a second synth and play along with that. Uh, so you've seen, and then I can go in here and uh, change the sequence uh, itself uh, um, and uh, work with that and transpose and uh, I'll just let it run and uh, after that you, if you have access to a Moog one, do that by yourself. Uh, I start here and this is starting and playing along with it. Oh. 